Hey, it's Hunt. You found Hunt on Saints. We're talking black and gold football. Do us a favor. Hit the like button, share your comments below, and hit that subscription button so you can get all of our content. Enjoy. We've been privileged to watch a lot of really good football over the last 19 years here in South Louisiana between the Saints and LSU. It hasn't been as good the last couple of years, and it was awful last weekend. And I'm just happened to find somebody that can relate to that. Christopher Price covers the Patriots and has for 19 seasons with the Boston Globe. He joins us now on the Jim's Firearms Hotline. Christopher, thanks for the time. How are you? My pleasure, guys. I'm not. I'm, I'm doing okay. How are you guys doing? Doing very well. I, I'm curious. Um, you've been watching a lot of great football over the last two decades up there in New England. Uh, what is the feeling around that organization right now? It's strange. It really is because I don't think this franchise has ever been at least under Bill Belichick, at this point in their history, in the last, you know, 20-plus years, because, you know, they they talk as if they are part of the postseason conversation. But this is a team that really, at least right now, needs to take care of a lot of things. You know, there's, there's a lot of questions surrounding this team, both on the offense and the defensive side of the ball. The defense is a little bit better, although probably a, a lot better than the offense, at least at this point. But ultimately, the answer to your question, it's, it's a strange period in this franchise's history, and I'm not quite sure where they go from here. Well, the question is, I guess where you start is at quarterback. Mac Jones is what thought to be the future of the organization, and we saw Bailey Zappi in a blowout last week in Dallas. Where do you think they go this weekend? I think they stick with Mac, uh, you know, good or bad. I, I think Mac is still the guy that, that they're going to go with. Bill talked about it a little bit earlier in the week and said, you know, Mac is our starter, at least for the foreseeable future. So. Uh, the thing for me is you can point to a lot of things about this offense this year. Look, the offensive line has been up and down health-wise. Uh, you can question some of the offensive options around him and how they've used some of those guys. But at some point, you're talking about a guy in Mac Jones who's played in the league three years now, or two-plus years, made 30-something starts. This is a guy who should be able to overcome adversity at some point, at least at this point in his career. Look, let's be honest, you know, this is the quarterback position we're talking about. There's a reason that they get all the magazine covers and date the supermodels and, you know, sign the big contracts. Uh, you know, fair or not, Mac has to prove that he can overcome some adversity, and I don't think he's done that, at least at this point in his career. Who are some of the guys that he needs to get involved to help the Patriots score some more points as far as the skill positions go? I, anyone at the wide receiver spot. You know, I, I think that we've seen some really positive things out of Hunter Henry. And I think when the offensive line has been right, uh, they can run the ball pretty well. But the, the wide receiver spot has been really hit or miss over the last couple of years with this team. Kendrick Bourne has been good, but he hasn't been consistent. Devontae Parker has shown flashes, but he has not been consistent. They have a young guy in here, Demario Davis, or I'm sorry, Demario Douglas, who was a six round pick out of Liberty and had a great summer, but he fumbled the ball uh, at, at a key point earlier in the season. Uh, yeah, it was against the Dolphins. Bill sat him down for a half game. This is a young guy who can get separation, has great short area quickness, but has just not been able to kind of get over the hump of, you know, committing that gaffe relatively early in the season. So ultimately, they need more production out of the wide receiver spot if this team wants to get to where it ultimately needs to be uh, when you're talking about the passing game. As far as the defense goes, how big a loss is Matthew Judon? I think it probably goes without saying, but in your in your estimation. It's huge. It is. It's really big. And not just from an on-field production standpoint. He's one of the leaders of this team. He delivers energy on a consistent basis. He comes out at the start of practice every single day and is up and is always firing the guys up. He is the emotional leader of this New England defense. So you, you not only lose your best pass rusher, but you lose one of your glue guys, really. Uh, this is going to give an opportunity for some younger guys to get some playing time, most notably Keon White, a rookie out of Georgia Tech defensive end who flashed very positively in the preseason. Um, but really, you know, he's not Judah. He's, he's not a, a pro bowl, you know, end of the line rusher, at least at this stage of his career. So you lose him, you lose Christian Gonzalez, who was the, you know, the defensive player, defensive rookie of the month for September. Those are two big blows for this defense to have to deal with. Yeah. Christian Gonzalez is next on my notes. So in totality, without those two guys, even with Bill Belichick is the mastermind, how, how good is this defense? I think they can still be competitive. You know, there there are a lot of guys on the defensive side of the ball who are, are playing very well. Most notably, uh, the back end of the defense in Jabril Peppers. This is a guy who you know has had a really interesting career arc, a high draft pick, 
went to the you know went to the Browns. He was part of that winless team you know a few years ago. Had a knee injury. He's he's really kind of grown into a, a leader on this defense. We talk about guys who need to bring energy, a little excess energy, with the loss of a guy like Judon. Uh, Jabril Peppers is one of those guys. He's he as well as Kyle Duggar and you know, some some more of the, the the defensive backs. I think have really asserted themselves. They're an important part of what they want to get done defensively. Uh, Juwan Bentley is is a really great inside linebacker, middle linebacker type who really runs things, uh, you know, on the defensive side of the ball. So they have a couple of other guys, again, like Keon White up front, uh, Lawrence Guy, Dietrich Wise Jr., who are good. But again, you know, these are two guys in Judon and Gonzalez who it's going to be interesting to see how they proceed defensively with those two guys on the sideline. I'm curious about the the mindset of this defense as the offense continues to struggle, right? Has that been kind of a talking point up there? It's like, yeah, the defense has been pretty good, but they don't score any, and so they're they're not getting any contribution. The Saints are dealing with the exact same thing, which is the question. Why well, well, I asked the question? Yeah, a little bit. Although it's not an overriding thing right now, the focus of everyone's you know uh, opinion right now, good, bad, is Mac Jones. He's the guy who's in the spotlight. You know, it's. The, the defense, I think everyone up here knows what the defense is capable of, even without a guy like Judon or Gonzalez. It, it's a group that's steady enough to kind of keep them competitive and keep them in games. Mac is the guy right now that everyone is looking at to, to really to kind of improve, to kind of step up. There's a lot of conversation around here. You know, if things start to really go south for them, do they just kind of throw the towel in on the season and, you know, start to look at Bo Nix or Caleb Williams or, you know, someone like that? I, I don't think that that's really quite in Bill's DNA. But really, for me, the polarizing guy, the centerpiece of all of this conversation, it's all on Mac Jones. And so, you know, this team, it's true across the league. Look, it's, you know, the, the teams rise and fall on the strength of the quarterback. But it's especially true here in New England with Jones in his third year with a real offensive coordinator. He writes it to this point in the season, he's just not getting it done. I feel there are so many parallels between the Patriots and the Saints moving into this game. The biggest difference, in my opinion, is that the Patriots are looking over at the Dolphins and they're looking over at the Bills and the Saints are looking over at the Bucks. Uh, it's just it's a different <laughs> feeling there. So with that being said, like how big is this game for New England as they sit here at one and three? Oh, it's a, it's a huge get right game. Look, you know this, this team has started one and three the last couple of years and they've managed to win that fifth game on the schedule, so they haven't fallen to one and four. Um, yeah, I, I think a lot of New England is looking at this as a chance to kind of right the ship a little bit because you get to two and three. And then you have the Raiders. Admittedly, it's on the road, but you know that's a winnable game. But if you get to three and three, you can start to talk yourself into being a competitive team, being a team that that, that has some postseason aspirations. But yeah, I mean, it starts with this week against the Saints. If they go to one and four, I don't even with a you know the extra playoff spot and the seventeenth game and all that. I, I don't know how you can talk yourself into this being a team that has designs on playing serious games in January. Christopher, I know you got some interviews to get to. Appreciate a little bit of time on this Thursday. Enjoy the football this weekend. My pleasure, guys. Take care. He's Christopher Price with the Boston Globe. Covered the Patriots for 19 years. Hey, it's Hunt. Thanks for watching Hunt on Saints. Before you leave, help us out a little bit. Hit that like button. Leave your comments in the section below. And hit that subscribe button so you get all our content right here from Hunt on Saints. We'll see you next time.